Let's face it, airports can be pretty annoying, but the most annoying thing about them is probably having to take the laptop out of your backpack and put it in a separate bin while going through the security check. But, of course, they wouldn't make us do those extra moves if there wasn't a good reason for it. Laptops are dense, and x-rays can't penetrate them, so it's easy to hide something dangerous there. If the device is out and on its own in a separate bin, it's easier for the scanners to capture something dangerous. Most airplanes are white. Is there a benefit to choosing this exact color? No, white paint doesn't make a place feel lighter. Neither does it save money on painting. Here are the actual reasons for the choice. Safety, efficiency, and comfort. The first airplanes had a metallic color. But the problem with metal is that it's prone to corrosion, so painting it is a great way to protect an airplane from corrosion. White is favored for several reasons. First, planes fly high above the clouds and are exposed to sunlight a lot. White is the color that absorbs the least heat, and white planes get heated less. Also, sunlight makes the paint fade away. A colorful airplane will have its paint fade very fast and will require repainting. And repainting is costly, so painting aircraft white is a more lasting choice. Also, any damage is more easily noticed on a white surface. So that's one more point for the white color. We always board from the left side of the plane, every single time, no exceptions. For some reason, the right side just doesn't seem to be an option. Yes, that's done on purpose. First, the captain usually sits on the left. This way, it's easier for the pilot to align the plane with the terminal jet bridge. Also, aircraft are fueled and loaded with baggage on the right side. Since people board the plane from the left, the crew can do their job undisturbed, and there's no danger to passengers. Consistency with the choice of a side helps to make everything work more effectively. Since everyone always enters from the left, all jet bridges are designed to get attached to the left side of the airplane. If every airplane had the freedom to choose the side, it would create an additional mess for the logistics behind the process. There are more questions popping up. Like, what does this black triangle drawn above one of the windows mean? Apparently, it marks the seat from which the view of the airplane's wing is the best. It's needed for the crew to find the spot as fast as possible if, in case of an emergency, they need to inspect the engines, slats, or flaps. This mark saves a lot of time. Next, the rows aren't well aligned with the windows. This is business. Originally, all planes are designed with rows and windows lining up perfectly. But when an airline buys a jet, they add some additional seats, squeezing them closer together. This way, they have more seats, which means more passengers, so they can sell more tickets. But you get less space for your legs and might miss out on a window. Also, all windows have rounded corners, and this is done for safety reasons. There used to be planes with squared windows, but those caused crashes because such windows couldn't withstand high altitude pressures. At high altitudes, external atmospheric pressure is lower than the pressure inside the cabin. So, there's a big difference in pressure inside and outside the airplane, and this creates stress. Without windows, this stress flows smoothly through the material. A squared window becomes an obstacle, and the flow of stress needs to change direction. The pressure builds up in the corners, leading to cracks. As a result, such windows break. Oval windows allow the stress to flow more smoothly, without disrupting them too much and preventing stress concentration. So, oval windows are safer. The glass used in production is stretched acrylic glass, and there are three separate panes of it. This is done as a security measure in case there is a breach. This way, at least one pane will remain intact at all times. Have you ever noticed those small holes in the windows? The tiny hole is actually only in the pane that's in the middle. Its task is to regulate the huge pressure difference inside and outside the cabin. This way, the outer pane can handle the load. If the outer pane breaks, the middle one, even though there's a hole in it, will be able to keep the window intact. Also, that hole prevents the windows from fogging up. Now, let's say you want to relax and watch a movie. Luckily, there's a pair of headphones, but they're weird. They have a two-pronged plug. 
No, this is not some kind of advanced technology. This is a witty move to prevent theft. If you can't use them anywhere else but on the airplane, no one will have the urge to snatch them away. Outside the airplane, they're basically useless. And then they bring food. There are people who love airplane food and people who aren't very fond of it. But most will agree that food does taste different in the air. Turns out it's actually a thing. Low air pressure, lack of humidity, and background noise that we have at high altitudes change the functioning of our taste buds. They become less sensitive to sweet and salty foods, so airlines have to use more seasoning. Have you ever wondered what would happen if someone opened an airplane door accidentally? This wouldn't end well. It would be very dangerous to say the least. More specifically, soon there would be a lack of oxygen in the cabin. But gladly, no one can open that door accidentally. The pressure difference between inside and outside makes it almost impossible. It would take some immense strength to open it. The doors are designed to open on their own in case of an emergency. Speaking of safety, during takeoff and landing, the crew dims the light in the cabin. This is done for a good reason. This way, in case of emergency, you will see everything more clearly. Your eyes will get used to the darkness and you'll have an easier time evacuating. Now, about pilots. They always wear those cool sunglasses. But the purpose is not to look cooler. They're used to protect the eyes. Throughout their career, pilots have to take care of their vision. But the problem is that it's not an easy task when you're a pilot. The damaging solar radiation that our sun emits is filtered out by the Earth's atmosphere. So the sunlight isn't very damaging to you if you spend most of your time on the ground. But it's different up in the sky. There's less air there and the brightness is way higher. And with every 1,000 feet of elevation, the solar radiation is around 5% stronger. On average, aircraft fly at an altitude of 35,000 feet. This means that the amount of UV radiation is 175% greater than on the ground. This is very damaging to any person's vision. The large amount of time pilots spend in the air makes them vulnerable to different eye problems. And having eye problems can cost a pilot their career. So, wearing sunglasses is a crucial thing for them, and these sunglasses must be of the best quality. They should minimize the impact of sunlight and withstand UV rays, providing 100% protection for the eyes. Also, they can't be polarized, since polarization can mess with the perception of the cockpit displays. They should provide the best clarity decrease eye fatigue and minimize color deformation so that pilots can see just like they would without their sunglasses on. That's it for today. So hey, if you pacified your curiosity, then give the video a like and share it with your friends. Or if you want more, just click on these videos and stay on the bright side.